Here is a look inside my SNC 1W, the new Destreamed Grade 9 Science course data collection binder. On the front here, I have the Avery labels, and for each number, I'll put the students in alphabetically, so it's easy to flip to their specific tab. Within each tab, students have this whole breakdown. Now this is my copy, they'll also have a copy in their own binders. The front here is a breakdown of the course as a whole. So I have the five units listed and room for the mark for each unit and what each unit is out of. I'm going to weight each unit of this course as 20% of the course mark and then we're planning on a final exam that's worth 30% to then calculate the final mark. Down here, I use my school's learning skills from our quarter term report card. To track learning skills throughout the course, I will note here how I gauge their learning skills at the quarter term, the midterm, and the final report card. Opening up the package, we'll see that each unit has its own two-page spread so that I and the students can both quickly see the unit as a whole. At the back, I have a little contact log so I can record if I've contacted caregivers at home or if I've had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the student. Going into more detail here, each unit is broken down by curriculum expectations. So those are copied and pasted directly from the curriculum. And then from there, each curriculum expectation, it's really not written in student-friendly language. Some of them are not really even written in teacher-friendly language, um, but they're all broken down into more student-friendly language at three different complexity levels. So within each cell here, you'll see what the student needs to be able to do or show in order to show a basic understanding of that curriculum expectation. In the next column, what do they need to do in order to show an intermediate understanding of that curriculum expectation? And then finally, the advanced understanding is in this column here. So within the cells, it tells the students what they need to do. And then the mark is based off of how well they did. So if they achieved a basic understanding, that would be a two out of four, 50%. Intermediate understanding would be a three out of four or 75%. And an advanced understanding is a four to four or a hundred percent on that curriculum expectation. So they know exactly where they are and where they need, what they need to do in order to get to where they want to go in terms of their grades and marks here. Some of the cells are grayed out, and that just means this time around, I didn't feel like they needed to or could show an advanced understanding, so I just grayed that out. And if that was the case, then an intermediate understanding of a three out of three, that would show proficiency there, so they would get 100% on that curriculum expectation. So that's the STEM skills and careers. You see here it's out of 36 out of 36 listed here. So however well they do on that throughout the course, this will be updated. So I'll use erasable pens to update that mark as we go through the course. That will make up 20% of their course mark. Looking at some of the other units, they have a um, similar layout. Different areas might be grayed out. On each page, they all have a key that shows how I'm going to communicate to students their proficiency. So if they got a check mark, that means that they either demonstrated this curriculum expectation individually as a product or a conversation or an observation, they've done it. According to the data gathering framework in Building Thinking Classrooms in Mathematics by Peter Lillydell, two consecutive check marks shows that it's time to move on. So if they have two consecutive check marks here, it's time to move on to the intermediate understanding. S stands for either a silly mistake or a response that needs more support or stronger support. So all of those start with S and that's kind of like an you almost got it, but you need a little bit more to, to get all of the way there. H means that they needed some help. G means that they demonstrated this within a group. X means that they attempted it but did not answer correctly. 
L will be a subscript probably that I use so that if they submit it, I'll subscript it with L just to show that it is submitted. They have shown their understanding, but just for learning skills to show that it was late. Of course, it wouldn't dock marks in that scenario. A for absence. So we run into some students that have habitual absences. So instead of leaving these blank, which would make it look like we're not offering opportunities for students to show their understanding, I'll put an A for those students when they're absent so that they see that they've missed this opportunity to show their understanding. And that I think conveys well to parents as well. And finally, N for not attempted. To go through, I'm going to use this same package of information up here and this section right after the roster. And what I'm going to do in this one that's not tied to any particular student is I'm going to track every time I do an assessment of a particular skill or curriculum expectation and the level at which I'm assessing it. That way I can see how am I distributing the assessment across the basic, intermediate, and advanced complexity levels? Am I biased towards certain curriculum expectations? Maybe I'm assessing them too much, and maybe there are some that I'm not assessing enough. So that gives me a view of how I am distributing the assessment across the entire course. So by the time I'm done this course, I should have a wealth of numbers in here just saying, okay, assessment number 85 was this, and I can flip to a page that looks similar to what I was doing earlier, and it will tell me on the date that I performed this assessment, what expectation it was, and what was the format. Was it a bell ringer? Was it a test, a quiz, um, an engineering task, that sort of thing. This is what it looked like last year. A little bit messy so I'll try to be a little bit neater this year and just shows like the number I think color coding here would be really good so if it was a bell ringer maybe I'm recording that in pink and if it was a test maybe I'm recording that in green and if it was a project maybe I'm recording that in purple so I'll color code and I'll number so that I'm tracking all of the assessments in the course and that will be just like one of these here, but it will be not tied to any specific student. That way, let's say I have a student for which I had a conversation with, maybe they needed more opportunities to show their work. They have more data entries in here. Then that doesn't really reflect what I'm doing overall in the class. So I just want that separate piece to record. And and of course the data log at the end. So every student will get one of these in my binder and in their binders. And we use a program called Edsby. My plan is to take snapshots of this because I'm a, I'm a pen and paper kind of girl. I'm gonna take snapshots of this and I can share that as evidence to the parents and the students can record that too, just so they're, they're not flipping through my binder because that's a I don't want to get into that. I don't want them accidentally seeing someone else's. And also for Edsby, what I'm able to do is input a summative assessment for each one of these curriculum expectations and adjust what it's worth. And then put that into a bucket so that each weighted bucket is worth 20% of the course. And then I can add the final exam at the end. And then this way I'll be able to track all my students through this equity-based, standards-based assessment framework that's really just data gathering, and I hope that it will make them very, very successful in this course. That being said, this is what it looks like right now. It may and should evolve over time as we learn more about this course and what it is we're expected to do in this course.